Hi friends, welcome to Sunil Engineering Academy, RRBJE 2019. We have already completed Physics Class 1, Class 2, Class 3, Class 4 and also Class 5. And also, we have completed previous bits Part 1. In this class, I am going to discuss previous RRB bits Part 2. In this Part 2, the previous bits on the topics motion, law of motion and gravity. Okay. Okay friends. Coming to the class. The first bit. Newton's first law of motion gives the concept of dash. Newton's first law of motion gives the concept of dash. Newton's first law. What is Newton's first, first law? It is also known as law of inertia. It gives the concept of Law of inertia or it gives the concept of inertia. It gives the concept of inertia. Second one, Newton's which law gives the definition of force? Newton's which law gives the definition of force? This, that is nothing but first law. Newton's first law gives the definition of force. And Newton's which law gives the magnitude of force? What is the magnitude of force? Force equal to ma. It gives which law? That is nothing but second law. Second law. It is first law. And Newton's first law of motion gives the concept of inertia. Okay. And the next bit. 1 horsepower equal to dash force. I already discussed this. 1 horsepower equal to 746 watts. 746 watts. And a bent bow has which energy? I already discussed this. Uh, the examples of this potential energy are bent bow, stretched rubber, and water stored in reservoir stored in reservoir these are the examples of potential energy so a bent bow has which energy it is answer is potential energy p potential energy and the next one water stored in reservoir has which energy water energy stored in reservoir it is nothing but it is also potential energy and the next one potential energy p is given by we know that formula for this potential energy P equal to M G H M G H and next one kinetic energy is given by kinetic energy we know that kinetic energy K equal to half M V square K equal to half M V square and the relation between the kinetic energy and momentum we know that the relation between kinetic energy and momentum. Kinetic energy equal to P square by 2M. P square by 2M. Next one. Distance is dash quantity and displacement is dash type of quantity. We know that distance is scalar quantity. Why? Because it is depends on only on the magnitude. Distance has only magnitude. But displacement has magnitude and direction. So distance is scalar quantity and displacement is vector quantity vector quantity and coming to units of acceleration we know that acceleration a equal to rate of change of velocity rate of change of velocity that means velocity by change in velocity by time for velocity the units for velocity are meter per second per time second so that is meter per second square so units of this acceleration meter per second square okay and the next one next to 14 next to 12th one negative acceleration is called i already discussed negative acceleration is nothing but deceleration deceleration or retardation 
retardation okay and next question 13th question acceleration due to gravity the value of g is normally the value of g is nothing but g equal to 9.8 meter per second square units are also very very important meter per second square for freely falling body which is zero for freely falling body for freely falling body the initial velocity u equal to zero the initial velocity u equal to zero that means the option a is the answer okay and the next one if a body falling vertically downwards then g value is dash if the fall if the body thrown vertically upwards here upwards vertically upwards then g equal to dash i already discussed the g value in case of vertically downwards that means it is the same direction of gravity same direction of gravity that means the g value is positive value is positive and in case of vertically upwards then it is opposite side of the gravity so g value is negative okay negative and next 16th question Sixteenth question: If a body thrown upwards, then the maximum height h equal to h equal to u square by two g. Here the option is B. Next one: G value is maximum at dash and minimum at dash. Maximum at poles and minimum at equators. maximum at poles and minimum at equators and the next one 18th one at maximum height which is zero at maximum height if you thrown a body vertically upwards at maximum height the final velocity equal to zero at maximum height the final velocity is zero that is option c and the next one if a body thrown upwards it reaches maximum height and then falls to the initial point then the time of flight the total time of flight if a body thrown vertically upwards and it reaches maximum height and then falls to the initial point then the total time of flight that is the total time is time of ascent by time of descent time of ascent plus time of descent that is time of ascent t1 plus and time of descent t2 we know that t1 is u by g and t2 is also u by g so total 2u by g 2u by g answer is b okay answer is b and the next one 20th one 20th question newton's which law gives the magnitude of force we already discussed this which law gives the magnitude of force that is second law second law when a running horse stops suddenly the rider bends backward the rider bends backward according to which law this is the example of newton's first law that is law of inertia Newton's first law, law of inertia. Next one, motion of jet is based on which law? It is based on third law. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. And according to the Newton's law of gravitation, force is given by. We know that force is proportional to m one m two by r square. So force equal to G into m one m two by r square. G is the universal gravitational constant. And next one, universal gravitational constant. G value is given by. G value is very very important. G equal to 
6.67 into 10 power minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. Newton meter square per kg square. This is very very important. Newton meter square per kg square. And force exerted by the earth on the moon. Force exerted by the earth on the moon is 2.02 into 10 power 20 newtons. 10 power 20 newtons. We have already calculated this value. If the weight of the object on the earth is 30 kg, then weight of the object on the moon, we know that weight of object on moon equal to 1 by 6 into weight of the object on earth. What is the weight of object on the earth? 1 by 6 into 30 kg. That equal to 5 kg. The moon is 5 kg. Okay. And the next one. 27th. If the cord of the lift is broken and falls freely, then the weight of the body in the lift is then the weight of the body in the lift is zero. That is option D. If the cord of the lift is broken, then and it falls freely, then weight of the body on the lift is zero. And in case of, in case And there is another three important cases I already discussed in previous class. If the lift is stationary, if the lift is stationary or moving uniform speed, then weight of body equal to its true weight. Its true weight. And the second case, if the lift is going up, if the lift is going up, then going up with some acceleration then weight of body then weight of body is greater than true weight greater than true weight if the lift is going down with acceleration with acceleration then body of the weight body of the weight is less than true weight these are very very important in case of the cord is broken, then it falls freely. Falls freely means then the weight of the body in the lift is zero. So option is D. Okay. And the next one, who, st who stated law of planetary motion? We know that. Who stated the planetary motion? Law of planetary motion. There are three laws. There is nothing but Kepler. There is nothing but Kepler. Kepler's three laws. We know that the Kepler three laws. The, what is the first law? The, according to the Kepler's first law, all the planets move around the sun are in elect, elliptical orbits. And the, what is the second law? According to the second law, the line joining the planet and the sun sweep equal distances or equal areas in equal interval of time. That means the velocity of planet around the sun is constant. And the third one, what is the third one? Third law is nothing but time period square is proportional to the distance cubed. This is the third law. Third law. That means near, near planet to the sun has smaller time period and uh, uh, farthest planet has larger time period. And the next question, 29th. According to the Kepler's, near planet to the sun has this is third law according to the third law near planet to the sun has small time period has small time period and for this planet larger time period larger time period next one near planet has high speed and for this planet has low speed or this to planet has low speed and the near planet 
near planet example mercury mercury has the small time period that is small time period that is say 88 days in case of farthest planet that is pluto and it has large time period large time period and it is 247 days okay these are the previous important bits on the motion and newton's laws okay and please subscribe my channel and thank you